So hopefully you've at least done, you've gotten the first part of this done as in you've picked an X, okay? Choose any X greater than A and less than B. A lot of people, again, chose this, but it's better if you just pick something. And as I said, if you don't want to do too much shading, pick one in here, but anybody could pick whatever they want. If that's the X you pick, what it means is shaded in with vertical segments. It means you know, color the thing and it's not going to be obvious on here. These are all vertical segments and I'm not doing it very well, but all these things, this is shading in the area, right? So based on what X you pick, you're going to have a different amount of area. Different people pick different X's, you're going to have different areas, right? So that's using vertical line segments there. Your shaded area represents a definite integral, right? That, that area represents this, the area from A up to x under this function, f of t. Now, this thing says here, why isn't it written as this? Um, the reason is here because the x is the specific value on the x-axis you picked, right? This is the specific value you happen to pick. Whereas, when you're talking about this curve, it's, I know they used f up here. It wouldn't actually matter, f of t, and call this line t. If we're going to use x to represent this specific point you happen to pick, we've got to use something different over here. So let's think of it as t, and you're probably right. This should say t here. Okay, But you can't have this because then it's confusing as to what x refers to. Does it refer to the specific upper limit of where you stopped, or does it refer to the, all the values on the axis? Right. So that's why... That's why you need to use a different thing there. This is kind of called a dummy variable. You're, you're putting in another variable just to stand in place. Even though conventionally this is always x, you need to kind of temporarily use a t with it. So at this point, as long as, you're, as, long as you can recognize, you have some area based on the x you picked. Um, so compare with other people. Even if you didn't do that, you can probably imagine everybody's going to have a different area. Um, your area is a number. It's a value. Okay, it depends on where you picked it. It's in that case or in that situation, since it's a different number based on what you picked, you could think of it as a function of x, right? The area is related to the value you picked for x. And we need a name for that. And just to keep things confusing, the best name to choose is capital F so that we have to say little f and capital F. Um, but that's just why. Capital F is the area based on where you pick as your as your x value. So it can be thought of as the amount of area shaded based on where you picked for x. Okay? So hopefully we're good up to there. Okay? Area. So you got two things. Little f is the heights of the curve. Little f heights of curve, right? And whoa, having writing problems here. And capital F is area under curve from A to X, right? So we got that difference, that, uh, that difference between those two things. Now, F is, again, the area under the curve, it's the integral. F is the integral of, of uh, this, right? Capital F is the integral it's an integral of, of f from a up to x, right? The integral means the, the definite integral means the area under the curve. But now we're going to look at what's the derivative of that area function. What's the rate of change of that area function as you change x, right? This you know from before. That little tick mark means rate of change of this. How do the areas change as you change x? And they remind you of what the derivative meant when we started, it's the slope of those two quantities, right? If you're looking at how f compares to x, the slope is just take a change in f, take a change in x, right? And compare them. And then the derivative is if you do the limit of that as they become, as delta x becomes zero, right? So the reason that they had you shaded in with these skinny little segments is so that delta x can be small, right? It says shade one more segment. So if you go up here, I'll do it in a different color. If I shade one more segment here, that's kind of like I've changed x a little bit. I've moved it ahead a little bit. Delta x is how much I moved it. And delta f is the 
the I don't know I'm going to say the new area that's there, right? My new little bit of area I added. I'm going to draw it bigger over here so that we can think about it, right? That that vertical line segment I'm going to draw with some thickness so we can think about it here. The width is delta x. The area is delta capital F, right? Change in area and change in x along the axis. And what we're looking for is the derivative, right? Whoa, went too far ahead. What we're looking for is this derivative, delta F over delta x. What, um, what, what does this expression give you? If you think about that, I should have drawn it down here, my rectangle. Here's my rectangle. What does that give you? Delta F over delta F. It just gives you F, right? Because it's a rectangle. The area is the width times the height. The height is just F at that particular X value, right? Let's move that off the words. It gives you the height at that particular X value. Now, I know when it's not, it, before you've done the limit, there's actually a right and a left. But eventually, we're going to squish it together, right? If you're taking the limit, this is the height of the curve. This is that little change in width. And this is the change in area. So when you say this, this says it just gives you f of x. Right? The f at, at your new x value there. So what we're saying here, why do I keep doing that? OK, what's the value of this? The height is f. This delta f, delta x is just the function, right? The height of the function. In words, this is saying, what this is leading to here is the derivative of that area of f, okay, as in the area function, is little f. If you think about it concretely, if you go back to the picture, the rate that the area is changing, right? The rate that F is changing is only dependent on the height of the curve where you happen to be. If someone happens to have X right here, how much area are they going to add when they add one more vertical segment? Only a little bit, right? If someone happens to be here, instead, they're going to add more area because the curve's higher. The amount of area they add is exactly whatever the height of the curve is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, if you're feeling like a lot of this has gone over your head, don't worry. This is kind of like an intro leading into the next section. We're going to spend some time with it because it's pretty important. It's really important. And understanding in a background and stuff. So don't say, don't walk out here thinking, hey, I. I missed the boat here and now I'm stuck, okay?